And you're welcome back. The National Democratic Congress is asking the Judicial Council to institute an internal inquiry into what the party describes as the phenomenon of unreasonable judgments and unpardonable factual errors which have been become a commonplace in the judgments of uh, the Supreme Court. Now, according to the largest opposition political party, it is shocked by the uh, blunders committed in some landmark cases, including the 2020 general uh, election petition case, hence the need for immediate remedial measures. Johnson Asiru NKTS, General Secretary of the party. Separation of powers and checks and balances. It implies that each state institution, each of the three state institutions, have powers reserved for them. And it will be dangerous in any democracy when one or two of the state institutions are on a collusion course with another. And that is why it makes a lot of wisdom for each state institution to apply forbearance in undertaking their duties. So if you know that there's an area reserved for the judiciary, it will be in the interest of parliament not to veer into that. If parliament knows that there is an area which is reserved for the executive, it makes a lot of wisdom and for the preservation of our democracy that parliament will be careful in their attempts to veer into the domain of the executive. In the same way, when the judiciary is presented with a situation where in exercising certain powers, they will appear to be veering in the exclusive domain of the legislature or the executive, they must tread cautiously. Because if each of the three institutions decide to stick to their, uh, I mean, they decide to exercise their full powers, there will be confrontation between the three institutions instead of collaboration and then it will lead to the breakdown of our democracy. And that is why we are worried if we see that there are attempts by the judiciary to invade domains that are traditionally reserved for the legislature. The NDC is also greatly concerned about the unholy haste of the apex court in trespassing into domains reserved for the legislature by the 1992 constitution. We note that one entrenched principle of our legal governance since 1993 has been the recognition by our courts that it is not their business to get into certain matters that by law have been assigned to other branches of government. Contrary to this, Principle, we have observed a creeping tendency of the APS court to trespass into domains reserved for parliament. In the process, the court has demonstrated legal or constitutional hubris and thrown overboard the restraints the court has exercised in the past over matters that fall within the domain of the parliament of the Republic of Ghana. And as I have said, we find this to be very dangerous development because if parliament also decides to es exercise powers that are on the borderline, it may cripple the whole democracy. Administrative abuses by his lordship the Chief Justice himself. Quite apart from the above, the Honorable Chief Justice, Justice Kwesi Aninyebua, is likely to go down 
in history as the worst Chief Justice of the Republic of Ghana since the inception of the Fourth Republic. His reign as Chief Justice has been characterized by unimaginable administrative abuses. These abuses are thrown into sharp relief when the conduct of the current Chief Justice is measured against the professionalism and conduct of former Chief Justices. We recall, in particular, the words of Chief Justice Apalu at his send-off party that, and I beg to quote, the one great quality I would wish to see in my colleagues is courage. That is to say, they should be in a position to defend to the deaf positions they believe to be right. I charge you to keep or help keep the flag of the judiciary flying and may the profession as a whole provide leadership and best counsel on these professional matters which we have all held in trust for the benefit of generations yet unborn." Unquote. It appears that this wise counsel of Chief Justice Apalu has no resonance with our current Chief Justice, who has failed to show leadership and to keep the flag of the judiciary flying by abusing his powers to empanel the courts. It has been our understanding that the setting up of divisions of the High Court in Accra, such as the Criminal Division, Lands Division, the Human Rights Division, and the Commercial Division, were all meant to ensure that these specialized courts deal with matters that directly fall within their competence and jurisdictions. In fact, this course started very beautifully and many were those who hailed the establishment of the court.